this is the Kimber Pepper Blaster 2. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching Peace, Love, and Guns. My name is Will, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Pepper Blaster 2 by Kimber, as well as doing a little bit of a state of the channel address, uh, some shout outs, some new product, and then as well answering some quarantine Q&A. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is of course the Kimber Pepper Blaster 2. It is a two shot uh, defensive item that is a chemical or pepper spray alternative. Um, what it does is it gives you the ability to pull this here trigger and you have two separate charges that shoot out a pepper gel mixture and uh, it's intended to incapacitate attackers. Um, is it what I think would be the best solution for your personal situation? Probably not, but it is a possible solution in your, um, your self-defense regiment. Um, I know that with what's going on in the world, there's a lot of people getting into firearms ownership and self-defense items. Uh, this is something that I consider kind of a gateway self-defense item. A gateway in that uh, you haven't necessarily joined the concealed carry handgun team yet, but you might in the future. Since you may or may not be rather new to the uh, defensive uh, realm, um, I know a lot of people are buying these. They're kind of a hot item. They're not super expensive. They're like 35 bucks. I want you to be safe with it. I want you to be effective with it or as, as effective as you can be with it. And I also want to put in my two cents that I want you to get your concealed carry permit and uh, or constitutionally carry wherever the case, whatever the case may be, wherever you live. Um, I want you to carry the most capable weapon that you possibly can. And I want you to treat that weapon with the respect that you would treat a firearm. So being that this is a sort of weapon, um, it might be good to go ahead and familiarize you with the principles of gun safety. So this isn't a gun per se, but it is a gun-like device. And when you have gun safety, what you find is that it doesn't matter if you're using a hand drill or holding something with a vaguely looking pistol grip or something like a self-defense item like the Kimber Pepper Blaster 2, um, you want to use that gun safety that, uh, that translates over very well. Um, so the first rule about gun safety is uh, all guns are loaded all the time. Uh, treat all guns as if they are loaded. Um, and what that means is don't assume that it's empty. Don't assume that it's clear or unloaded. You treat it as if it's loaded. You treat it as a dangerous thing. It's not going to do anything just sitting there, but when you start messing with it, that's where you get into trouble. So treat it as if it's loaded. And there's some specific behaviors that you're going to do when you treat uh, different things. Uh, there's different battery of arms or different processes to work certain items. Um, so you get into those uh, different things, um, looking at those owner's manuals, and knowing how those products work, um, especially when you're talking about firearms. But yes, treat all guns as if they're loaded. The second thing is um, don't point it at anything you're not willing to destroy. If you point it at a human and you destroy a human, that means they're dead or maimed for life. You do not point a gun or a gun-like thing at anything you don't want permanently damaged in some terrible way. So the way that we do that is we pretend like there is a red-hot fiery laser beam or lightsaber that comes out of the muzzle and it just goes in a straight line into infinity. And we don't point that at anything we don't want to be destroyed. So if you're in an apartment, that means you're not pointing it up at the ceiling where your neighbors might be laying down in bed. If you're in a house, you don't point it at the room where you know, you're likely to have a loved one sitting on the couch or whatever the case may be. Um, if you're in a boat, you probably don't want to point it at the floor of the boat. If you're in a helicopter, you might not want to point it at the floor of the helicopter, but you probably don't want to point it at the blades. So essentially, don't point it at anything you don't want destroyed. Uh, it's a very easy way to do it. Pretend that there's a red hot laser beam coming out and anything that that laser beam touches, it's going to just immediately destroy it, cut it in half, whatever the case may be. So do not point it at anything you don't want to destroy. The third rule of gun safety is to keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you're ready to fire. So 
this realm right here, nothing goes in there. Nothing goes in there except when you're shooting. So right now I'm not shooting. So this is the kind of grip that you want to take on this device. Get a good uh, purchase on it. And my finger is not inside the trigger guard at all. Straight and off the trigger until we're ready to fire. And uh, this happens to be a two-shot weapon, and uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna put our fingers in there and shoot it because we're not shooting it right now. So, so that is that. So keep your fingers straight and off the trigger until you're on target, ready to fire. Rule number four of gun safety is to be aware of what's in front of your target and what's behind your target. Bullets go through things, including bad guys and lots and lots of walls. So if you shoot a bad guy, it could possibly go through a bad guy. It could go through the next wall and several walls down uh, through the way uh, into the neighbor's house, uh, get the neighbor's dog, property, or the neighbor. So we want to make sure of what our backstop is before we pull the trigger. If you got a family member that crosses the way, uh, you could get them. Uh, and the same thing would be true of a pepper spray type device. Um, you have to be very careful that you don't get sprayed yourself. Um, so you want to know how that product works and it's oriented correctly so you're not spraying yourself. And then you want to of course make sure that you're not spraying innocent bystanders if at all possible um, because that's good. We don't want to be in a legal battle against people that you know you may or may not have been uh, trying to protect uh, as well as yourself. So yes, if you want to see this pepper blaster in action, definitely check the link up above or down in the doobly-doo below because we shot this on camera. It shows you the range as well as the spread and kind of the pattern of that effect that this puts on the target. And um, we go a little bit more in depth into its use case. This particular pepper blaster has been modified by my brother. This was given to me as a gift and uh, he's painted it kind of this light beige color because it used to be like a blue or something like that and he thought it looked cool. I think it looks kind of cool too. Um, just something that he did. Uh, he covered up the, uh, the front nozzles there and, um, and then painted the rest of it. The Kimber Pepper Blaster also comes with a little trigger guard which has been removed and this is actually a modification. Generally I don't like the idea of removing safeties from things. Uh, a lot of people get hurt in industrial accidents that way. Don't do that. But for guns, I don't like any safety <laughs> that involves sticking something in the trigger guard. Uh, they have goofy like little giblets that you put inside of like Glocks and stuff. Um, there's holsters that have things there. This thing has a basically a little trap door from the factory, a little uh, kind of lever that you poke your finger through um, and then you're able to access that trigger. I don't like that methodology. I don't like that mentality that you have something completely blocking the trigger out and something, first of all, that is inside the trigger guard. Nothing should be in the trigger guard. Um, you should also have uh, any defensive item that you're carrying. Uh, you should have that carried in some fashion that allows you to access it and that keeps it safe from any sort of accidental or negligent uh, discharge. So uh, they make Kydex holsters for these that you can wear on your belt. Um, this is something that you can pocket carry. I recommend having it in some kind of holster. And if you are like me, you'll like that idea of removing that little um, kind of hinged guard there and just kind of twisting that or breaking it off or cutting it with a, a knife and getting that out of there very, very, very carefully so that you don't shoot yourself with this pepper spray. So with that, uh, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, the following stuff will be my channel address as well as some new product. I encourage you to subscribe, like, share, comment down below. We like to have discussions if you have questions. Go ahead and also check out the Kimber Pepper Blaster 2 video where we shot it and uh, kind of show you how that works. So that is this one with the modifications that have been done to it. If you want to see us shoot this because I do not personally carry this, uh, comment down below and we'll see if we can do some kind of fun testing with it. No, I'm not going to shoot myself with it or shoot any living creature with it because no. Uh, <laughs> I don't wish that experience upon anybody. The next line of business is the state of the channel. The channel just hit 1,300 subscribers, 1,300 subscribers. That's amazing for a just for fun channel that I kind of do um, just for fun. Um, never thought it would get there. Uh, it's happened really quickly. There's been a lot of support. Um, 
Somebody that I really want to thank has been William Britton and Nicole Britton of Gray Fox Ranch and Gray Fox Gunsmithing. They've enabled me to do a lot of my recent content, probably like 95% of it, on their property out in Huntsville, Texas. They are unfortunately no longer there. They have moved to Washington, so if you need any horses or you have any gunsmithing work you need done, contact them, Gray Fox Ranch in uh, Washington State, and they'll be able to help you out. That said... I'm looking for a new place to shoot the kind of videos that I do. So if you have any leads, hit me up down in the doobly-doo below. I am very excited to get out somewhere and uh, start uh, filming. Uh, I've got a lot of content lined up, and uh, we can probably work something out where you know I can do shout-outs for your business or whatever the case may be. Uh, but I'm looking for a good freedom-loving uh, gun range or uh, some sort of... Uh, arrangement with land that we can uh, continue what we do here on the channel which is have a lot of fun try to educate and uh, move forward uh, with peace loving guns got a little bit of a mail call um, first thing is uh, and this kind of goes with the channel update as well i just got a new camera you might be able to tell but uh, we got the dji osmo action camera and this guy is an action camera it's kind of like a gopro it uh, has a lot of neat little features about it that I like. It's got a forward-facing screen. I can look at myself, so this is me looking at myself. This is me looking at you, myself, you, myself, you. But I can kind of frame up using the little screen that's on there. And then as well, um, it's kind of a form factor that I like. It can use an external mic, which normally I have to use an external mic and sync up with my uh, video, and that's an extra step. It makes it a pain in the butt to work with. Uh, so I want to make this as easy as possible um, make my life easier and give you guys frankly better content. So that's the DJI Osmo and uh, That would have released this information earlier, but we also got the DJI Mavic mini um, I've done some research. I've been wanting drones for a long time I actually bought this around Christmas time and naturally the first thing I did was take it out fly it at night fly it into a tree and um, Nothing bad happened actually but I decided that I was going to continue to fly it and I flew it into a second tree. And when I say I flew it into a tree, I flew it into the tree's canopy, managed to not hit a single branch or pine needle, and then flew it out safely and said, wow, I should probably stop now and then continue to fly it for another 15 or 20 minutes. So this drone has a total of about 30 minutes of flight time on it right now and didn't even run out one battery and uh, Crashed it, doing about $160 worth of damage, got new parts in, and repaired it. And it turns out that you have to send it in for calibration. Nobody knew, nobody knows that really in the DJI community, so that's kind of um, fortunate, a little bit frustrating. Sent it into Cloud City Drones, really good guys. They didn't really know at the time that it was going to require calibration, so they are going to calibrate it for free. And they even split the shipping back to me. Uh, really good dudes. If you need drone parts or maybe drones, anything, go to cloudcitydrones.com. Check them out, possibly. Um, they have been straight shooters with me, and I really appreciate that. i um, done all the communication with them through email and um, didn't have to call, didn't have to be mad, uh, just straight shooters and uh, appreciate that. So if you need drone stuff, maybe consider checking them out. And uh, we're really excited to uh, fly the Mavic Mini. It kind of chose this because it has a 2.7K camera. I don't do any filming in 4K. It's a lot of data, a um, lot of space, and it takes a long time to process that stuff. I like 2.7K because it lets me do some framing, uh, some creative zooms, uh, as they say. And um, we can uh, go from there. So I output my content in... 60 frames per second usually at 1080p and uh, this is going to be enable me as well as the Osmo action camera It's going to enable me to put out uh, HD content um, that I can also pan and uh, zoom the image around to give kind of the best picture that you know is what I'm going for with that even if the shot wasn't that great uh, filming because I'm a terrible cameraman and stuff happens when, you, when you're out filming and shooting guns so hopefully this little guy is something that uh, we're going to get some good action on in the future. Um, so uh, that finishes up the uh, mail call portion of this. Uh, there's a quarantine Q&A challenge going on in the small gun tuber community. And uh, there's questions that I've been challenged to answer on my channel. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. I was challenged by Southpaw Sharpshooter to go ahead and do this. And uh, 
here we go. We're going to do some uh, quarantine Q&A. Um, so first question is, how much toilet paper do you have? Um, I've seen a lot of these uh, small gun tuber videos, so my answer is actually maybe a little bit different than everybody else's. Um, I don't have any toilet paper. I haven't had toilet paper since before they started doing the lockdowns. Um, I actually have a bidet because, um, you know, like if you're in the gaming community and PC master race, well, bidet master race. If you don't have a bidet installed in your house, you should. It's great. Um, I will link the product that I have. Um, I like it a lot. Um, it is the Neo Lux Blue Bidet. Um, it's awesome. It's a deluxe bidet from Amazon. I think at the time I bought it was like 45 bucks. I think they're like 65 or 80 now. But um, it allows you to connect the hot water from your sink to it and then the cold water from the, the toilet that fills the, the tank. Uh, you can connect the hot water so you get a nice hot, cold. It's got a setting for feminine hygiene and a setting for everybody's booty. And uh, it's awesome. It self cleans and rinse, it rinses itself off. It's good stuff. Uh, highly recommended. And uh, that really minimizes the amount of toilet paper that you need to use. I happen to have been out before the quarantine stuff happened. So I don't have any right now and it's not a problem. Um, so that, that is that. What's been my biggest challenge? Um, there was kind of a switch between uh, traveling back and forth to work to not. Um, but it's been easier for me because I work in uh, AV slash video conferencing. So I've been able to do all of my normal job functions from home. I had to make a little bit of an adjustment just because, you know, the, my machines are different. I have my home computer and my work computer and the monitors are different and different workflow and stuff like that. But uh, that's probably been my biggest challenge. Um, I will say that I have been very lucky. I'm very privileged to not be as affected as some other people. Um, maybe the biggest challenge. Um, and again, I am very fortunate. I still have a job, but um, I did have to take a 25% salary deduction which is supposed to be temporary so the company is looking at making uh, changes in the near future bringing everybody's salary back up but i did take a 25 percent salary cut which is ouch that hurts so that's no good what's my location uh, i live in houston texas i'm about an hour north of houston and uh, that's where i'm at texan by choice wasn't born in texas got here as fast as i could that whole thing hey yo everything's bigger in texas no it's not just kidding that's what she said what have i gone without um, I really haven't gone without. So again, I'm very privileged in that I haven't really had to go without anything. Um, I haven't been able to get Jimmy John's like I normally do when I go to work. I'll buy Jimmy John's for lunch a lot, way too much probably. So um, that's something that I went without. So not a big deal. What am I most grateful for? Probably friends and family. Um, I've got... I don't have a lot, a lot of friends, um, but the ones that I do have are very, um, very close, very compassionate, very caring and supportive. Um, my family is uh, in that uh, same uh, same way too. Um, very close with, with my sister and um, mom and uh, siblings. Um, I don't see them probably as much as I should for how close we are, but yeah, so I'm very grateful for my family. What do I miss most from before the quarantine? I don't know. Uh, largely, my life hasn't changed that that much. Um, so I'll say I miss getting paid what I normally get paid. <laughs> but um, other than that, um, I, I guess I kind of miss the uh, kind of social media arguments people used to argue about rather than arguing about being safe and not transmitting a virus to people. That's kind of um, frustrating that that's the discussion that we're having now. The last time I went camping was years ago. I think last time I went camping, I was with my ex and we went camping for like a Valentine's Day camp out uh, somewhere around Huntsville, Texas. Don't recall. Um, I'd done a lot of really awesome camping back when I was in college. And um, actually, I plan on, I took a lot of video of that. I did a lot of filming, a lot of picture taking while I was on those trips, looking through the lens of a camera. And then uh, it's funny because I realized now that I took too many pictures, I took too much video, maybe didn't enjoy it enough while I was there, really enjoyed it. Um, but uh, those videos don't mean anything 
in their raw form. They have to be edited and they kind of have to be shared in order for me to edit them. So I think what I'm going to do as a project in the future, maybe if I don't find a, a place to shoot at, um, to shoot this Peace, Love & Guns content, I'm going to show some stuff for my camp trip, camping trips. Uh, did a lot of backpacking, did some canoeing, um, cool places uh, down in Havasu Canyon and Grand Canyon. Uh, I've got filming from uh, when I went to Big Bend, canoed the Big uh, canoed and Bokeas Canyon and Big Bend, a lot of cool trips. So maybe I'll throw together some little montages or videos of those trips to kind of commemorate those in my mind, and I can kind of uh, capture the best parts of those journeys and uh, share those all with you. Um, favorite quarantine food? Um, I've been eating probably too much Papa John's. Uh, the Papa Dias, or like a quesadilla from Papa John's. It's like a small pizza they fold in half. Those are really good. I've probably eaten too many of those. Um, and what have I been doing for exercise is the final question, and that is the question of uh, my life for the past 10 years. Not a whole lot. Um, yeah, so I, I get out of bed, and then I walk to my office chair and then I move my hands around a little bit. Very sedentary is the answer. Not a lot. That should probably change. Um, I want to get out on the mountain bike again, so I need to pull that out, um, pair up the tires, make sure derailers and brakes are all working, and maybe hit some trails. My girlfriend just got a mountain bike, so we'll see where that goes. And uh, I think that covers it for this video. Since the Q&A questions are kind of a small gun tuber challenge, I'm supposed to challenge a couple people. So I'm going to go ahead and challenge Jimlock23, who is my good friend. And then I'm going to challenge my good gun tuber friend, who I don't think has been challenged in this challenge yet. And it's amazing because he makes really good content. He's uh, fun to watch. And that is um, Strictly Plinking. Alex, I challenge you to the... Uh, the gun tuber quarantine question challenge just answer these questions and uh, we'll go from there so uh, thank you guys for watching make sure to comment like subscribe share all of those wonderful things down below and uh, have a good day